Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new Housing Works store that opened in April. Lisa Berdong, the manager, and her staff did a great job making room for us all. I'm Dick Hughes. <laughs> I'm Dick Hughes. I'm the loose cannon, one of the people who uh, thought up this conspiracy to get us all together to think about Agent Orange and to do something about it. Those two great books, they were published by Seven Story Press. The first book originally came out in 1989. It was by Fred Wilcox, of course, and it was about the impact Agent Orange had on American veterans. The second book, which just is new, Scorched Earth, is about the Vietnamese and the impact on Vietnam. So we owe Seven Stories Press, who does so many books that nobody else would do, and Housing Works, and a few loose cannons, all our thanks. This is an important event to make a breakthrough on a horrible tragedy of many decades, Agent Orange, which still persists. If you have ideas about doing something when you see the books, please do it. After a colloquy with our guests, we will have a Q&A. Please wait until you get a microphone in hand. We all want to hear your question. We all want to hear your answer. Thank you so much for coming, and it gives me great pleasure to, inter to introduce two very special people. Noam Chomsky, who most of you know and others will come to know, has been telling truth to power without rhetoric and just the facts, ma'am, just the facts old dragnet fan, for decades, and is still doing it. And Fred Wilcox, who has been out in the vineyards writing these two books, feeling the pain of knowing people directly affected by Agent Orange and seeing them pass away, or if they survive, to suffer terribly. So I'm going to leave it now to our two guests, and then your questions. Thank you for coming. I hope you can all hear, and when you step out of here, please try to do something about people suffering from Agent Orange. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, hello. Uh, thank you for all coming out uh, this afternoon on this beautiful afternoon. My name is Fred uh, Wilcox. Uh, Dick Hughes has done magnificent, incredible work. He's helped the people uh, suffering from Agent Orange, and he's arranged this whole thing with his family. They've worked very, very hard. So I want to uh, express my appreciation for them. Uh, I want to express my appreciation for my family who's here, my children, my friends from Ithaca, and Professor Noam Chomsky, who's taken uh, out of his busy schedule to come here. It's wonderful. Thank you, uh, Noam, very much. <laughs> Uh, I, I would just like to talk a little bit briefly, and then I'll turn it over to Nob, about what I've been uh, trying to do for about the last 30 years, uh, and that is tell people about what I consider to be, there are many, many tragedies, many historical tragedies, many tragedies in the world, but this is a great tragedy, and let me just begin by saying that three million Vietnamese people are suffering from the effects of chemical warfare, that is, the defoliation campaign that the United States government waged in Vietnam for at least 10 years. Uh, three million adults and 500,000 children. So one of the things I'd like to do today is really dedicate this whole uh, thing, the whole meeting uh, today to the children, to the Vietnamese children, to the children of uh, U.S. vets, Korean vets, New Zealand vets, Australian vets, all of these uh, people who have fathered or women who have given birth to seriously uh, deformed children, legless children, blind children, seriously retarded children, uh, all the same uh, result, as a result of having been exposed to something called TCD dioxin, which was the contaminant in Agent Orange. And so I really don't think you can overestimate this tragedy. I don't think you can exaggerate it. I have never tried to exaggerate uh, the tragedy because it's not necessary. Uh, it's ongoing. It's a tragedy that just doesn't seem to have any end. That is to say, if you go to Vietnam today, one of the things that really frightens the Vietnamese people is that they're seeing the third and fourth and sometimes fifth generation of Agent Orange children. 
So a lot of people will say, well, that war ended. You know, it ended in 1975. Why, I've been asked this, why do you keep talking about it? Why do you keep writing about it? Uh, why do you keep obsessing over it, if that's what you want to say? And I say, because it hasn't ended. It hasn't ended for the children. It hasn't ended for the Vietnamese people. It hasn't ended for American vets who are reaching about the age of the late 50s and early 60s, our vets, and dying. Uh, and um, many, many people don't know about this, so I guess my goal has been and continues to be uh, to tell as many people as possible about this ongoing incredible tragedy uh, that is a direct result of chemical warfare. No, um, Well, just to, I mean, as all of you know, most of you know, <coughs> this is the 50th anniversary, uh, almost to the day, in fact, of uh, some very significant decisions that were made in Washington, the Kennedy administration. Uh, John F. Kennedy and his advisors uh, basically decided in November 1961 to sharply escalate the war in South Vietnam, uh, which had been going on for some time, and to essentially turn it into a U.S. invasion of South Vietnam. At that meeting, Kennedy, those meetings, Kennedy uh, uh, authorized the uh, U.S. Air Force to start bombing South Vietnam. Pretty soon they were apparently bombing, a, carrying out about a third of the missions under South Vietnamese markings that didn't fool anybody except those who wanted to be fooled, uh, authorized napalm. Uh, and uh, what we're discussing here authorized what ought to be called chemical warfare, defoliation it was called. Uh, the bombing uh, then as you all know, expanded, led to uh, half a million American troops invading the South, uh, uh, the bombing by within a couple of years, by 1966, 67, the leading, uh, one of the leading specialists on Vietnam, the uh, military historian, Vietnamese scholar, Bernard Fall, uh, uh, in his last writings before he was killed in combat, uh, wrote that uh, he thought that Vietnam might not survive as a uh, cultural and historical entity under the impact of the most severe bombing, a severe attack ever launched to get an air against an area that size. Uh, it went on, uh, not only against South Vietnam and North Vietnam, at least where nobody was looking. The area around Hanoi was somewhat spared because there were a lot of eyes there, foreign embassies, uh, but the south of southern part of North Vietnam was turned into a moonscape. Uh, uh, South Vietnam itself you know, may never recover. The bombing ex extended to northern, northern Laos, which had nothing to do with the war in Vietnam. It was mainly because a lot of uh, uh, Air Force uh, planes were idle during bombing pauses, had that something to do. Now here they virtually destroyed uh, what amounted to a virtually Stone Age society, primitive society in, in northern Laos, littered with uh, unexploded ordnance, people still dying, uh, people that were living, literally living in caves for two several years trying to survive. I interviewed a lot of them back around 1970. Uh, then it expanded to Cambodia, uh, which was actually the most intense bombing in history. Uh, following Henry Kissinger's uh, immortal phrase, uh, anything, that, uh, an anything that flies against anything that moves. Those were the orders handed down by Kissinger from his boss to the uh, Air Force and the bombing in a brief period, just a couple of years, we now know uh, uh, reached the level of all uh, allied bombing in the Pacific region, the entire Pacific region uh, during World War II, including the two atom bombs, all on a, a remote peasant, poor peasant society. Uh, a lot of consequences to that, and very ugly ones, but it uh, uh, finally more or less ended. But it didn't end, as Fred pointed out. The, the effects of the chemical warfare uh, continued and will continue. Uh, the, uh, it soon turned into, very quickly turned into crop destruction, uh, major war crimes, uh, 
Fred can tell you a lot more about this than I can, so I won't go on with it. i just add one more word about it. Uh, there are serious consequences to uh, not paying attention 